Yashovardhan Azad, one of uh, India's most well-known and well-regarded commentators on matters intelligence. He's a former IPS and former special director with the Intelligence Bureau. Mr. Azad, welcome. Gaurav, thanks for being with us. Uh, Mr. Azad, what do you make of this, sir? You know, for the lay person, that Canadian intelligence, and this is not something we are saying, the son of Hardeep Nijjar says that Canadian intelligence was meeting his father every week to brief him and to hold meetings. What do you think that was about, sir? You know, uh, Shiv, you have raised a, a lot of pertinent questions also before. Let me add a few, because if you have any formal, uh, you know, uh, murder yeah. investigation, there are so many trails you like to pick up and then you thread uh, in between. In this particular case, what is really intriguing is that after even three and a half months, there have been no suspects, there have been no statements, there have been... And, and by the way, if you, if you look at the uh, a very deep study by Washington Post, even the people uh, in, who are living nearby have not been questioned. So uh, apparently, how is this investigation being done? What does not do? The second part is that this is absolutely mind-boggling when the son says that he was having a regular meeting with the CSIS. Mm. Now, obviously, as, as an intelligence man, as a cop, I would say he, he could have been one of the assets. Because, mind you, Shiv, this gentleman, uh, Mr. Nijjar, had gone over to Pakistan to meet the KTF chief. And it, it, on your platform, you said it so many times yes. that he went to Tara. This was an information. We also gave this information to the to the Canadians. That the Canadians were already aware of this information because this travel was facilitated, obviously, by, by the ISI. The other thing which is very, very... Uh, you know, visible and known to everyone is the is the collaboration between the uh, ISI offices in Canada and the various Khalistani groups. These Khalistani groups who are running, uh, you know, extortion rackets, as you've already pointed yeah. out, also being funded in, in some of these gurdwaras. So a lot of these actions are resulting in inter-gang rivalry. And mind you, there was a murder before Ribu Daman Malik's. And then uh, even later, there, there is another murder. But these two murders have not raised any hackles. Uh, mm. in Canada. Only the Niger murder has, has raised. So obviously, he was somebody important. Either an ISI mode, he was certainly an asset for the uh, Canadian intelligence services because he was giving the information. And that's usual. I mean, I, I don't think it's, it's, something is even wrong with that because they would like to get information about the Khalistani activities. Correct. But the point after getting so much of information about Khalistani, nothing was done. And lastly, the most important point, if it was conveyed to Niger that there is a serious threat on you, then why wasn't he given security? Hmm. This is very, very mind boggling. And, you know, the, the, uh, uh, hearing an assessment like that, Gaurav, from a former special director of Intelligence Bureau, uh, you know, makes this very plain, makes this very black and white to us, uh, you know, in an area that is otherwise gray. Amazing questions being asked by uh, Mr. Azad Gaurav. Uh, was he an ISI mole? Very likely that he was some kind of an informant, which is not on the face of it surprising. It's very possible that he was, which leads to the question, who bumped him off? And if there was a threat to his life, why wasn't he protected by the Canadian intelligence? Whatever be the case, Gaurav, it looks like there is a big cover-up at play. There is a big cover-up, perhaps an, uh, you know, an attempt to blame India yeah. for a crime where India is very categorically saying we've had absolutely no role to play. You heard the external affairs minister, Dr. S. Shankar, say that's not India's policy. And India wanted this man arrested. Had Canada actually taken action on all the dossiers that India had sent after designating Hardeep Singh Nijjar as a terrorist under UAPA, uh, you know, Prevention of Unlawful Activities Act, the Canadian agencies could have arrested him and put him in jail. Perhaps he would have been alive. They could have extradited him into India. Perhaps he would have been alive. But they did nothing. They get meeting, according to the Sun, every week. Every week there was a meeting. Which hmm. means he must have been someone really important as far as the Canadian intelligence agencies were, there, were concerned. That they'd met him on the 17th. That's one day before the murder. He was murdered on the 18th. There was another meeting, according to the Sun, scheduled for the 20th. So if they were meeting him so frequently on the 17th and then again on the 20th, which means he had some kind of information that the intelligence agencies really wanted. And was that the reason he was bumped off, that someone didn't want that intelligence to reach the Canadian intelligence agencies? Uh, and was he 
actually playing a double game, working with the ISI, as uh, Mr. Yashovardhan Azad very rightly pointed out, and as you've reported, Shiv, he travelled to Pakistan, he'd gone to Nankana Sahib, he'd yeah. met other terrorists there, including Tara, and those pictures are out in public domain. All of that seemed to indicate that there was a much bigger racket. Now, was this racket just about human trafficking? Was this racket just about drugs? Or was this terror, extortion and drugs rolled in together? Which incidentally, after the killing of Ripu Daman, uh, and also about uh, that Sukhdul Singh, that yes. other two killings, which uh, as Mr. Azad very rightly pointed out, that Sukhdul Singh, Sukha's killing hasn't raised anybody's hackles. But is that the gang war that is happening to perhaps silence those who may have been paying off people to continue that uh, gang operation? and extortion operations in Canada. So there are many layers and unfortunately very shoddy investigations in the past three months by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police.